So, we will talk about SDLC. SDLC is nothing but software development life cycle. So, in the SDLC, there are many methodologies. If we develop a software, we will develop a software. Many methodologies have been brought up. That is the first and foremost and very traditionally followed methodology is waterfall model. Waterfall model is the first and foremost. This is mostly our training, and the first and first we prepare for a software developer to prepare for a software developer in the waterfall methodology. That's what What exactly this waterfall methodology comprises of? So it has different phases. First one, it will start off with requirement analysis phase. Number one, first one, the requirements are one of the first. So the first step in waterfall methodology is requirement analysis. Next comes design. Requirements are what? Now, what kind of a project are we going to do? What kind of a project are we going to do? What kind of a project are we going to do? What kind of a project are we going to do? We prepare a document called SRS. Software Requirement Specification. So, in the SRS, first, we will document a document. Always you can get back to this. You get the SRS signed off from the client. And then you start off with your design so that the client does not later on say that no, I had given this requirement and then you have not accomplished it. So what you do is you first prepare the software requirement specification document. You send it across to the client and get it signed off and then you start with your work. Your work starts when you start with the design. How you plan to do this project? How many modules will it have? <coughs> What are the classes you will be using? In which folder will you save which class? You have two different. You have two different uh, kind of design documents. Hmm? One is uh, one. For mainly you have this uh, class diagram and also a sequence diagram. So in a class diagram, what you do is you capture which class communicates with which class and how the classes will be arranged in, in, a, in a particular order. And in sequence diagram, you capture the events which, be, which will be happening in the particular module. After hitting the first page, uh, in, to which page will you be going? After, after the user goes into the first page, which, which page will the user be seeing? So you will be capturing the sequence of events which, are, uh, which will be happening in the particular module. So the design will be div divided into, majorly divided into sequence diagram and also class diagram. Next comes the actual coding phase. You have to decide on the technology based, uh, before you start off with this, you should be very clear on which technology the project will be uh, uh, based on. Whether it will be based on the .NET technology or whether it will be based on Java, you should first decide on that and then start coding. If you decide on .NET, then you should uh, choose that particular, uh, you should choose that particular environment, you should uh, download the corresponding software and then get the system prepared and then start developing. If, if you are going with Java technology, then uh, there is, uh, it, you have open sources available with you. You have to uh, go and download the, follow, uh, the required software and then start <coughs> working on the project. So each and every time you, you can go back and revisit the uh, requirement analysis document and, and also the design document and then start, start your coding phase. After the coding phase is done, you will have the testing phase. The coding, the development team and the testing team will be different. The testing team will only have access to the requirement analysis document. They will study the requirements, they will prepare the test cases and they will start the testing. So after the coding is done, the, co the developed the software is given to the testing team. They will do the testing. And after the testing, and after the testing is done, then we will go into the implementation phase where we will uh, make the software visible to the client. In, after the software is made visible to the client, then the client will start testing the software as to whether it is meeting their requirements or not. So that phase is called user acceptance testing. After the user acceptance testing is done, if it is successful, then the project is signed off. 
in case it is a migration project even after the sign off you will have to give support to the client in the form of production support like if you if there are some minor uh, data migration to be done like real time data to be incorporated likewise if there are a few things to be done so after the sign off you will be giving support to the client so that is called as the production support phase so this is what it is about waterfall model mostly all mostly all uh, traditional met, uh, traditional software development methodology will follow waterfall methodology only